This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to talk about six common errors you'll see in the Unity console and how to solve them. It's going to be a little bit more beginner focused because these are things that often crop up when you're a beginner and when you're first learning how to read the errors in the console log it can be a little bit intimidating. You have these different icons here, you're getting information but it's not super descriptive and if it's filling up the console with logs of errors it can be just overly intimidating and you just want to kind of shut down the program and walk away from it. So I want to take you through these common ones that you'll see so that you can kind of view them and when you see certain phrases know that hey I think I know what's going wrong with this and I can try and fix it because none of us are ever going to make perfectly bug-free code especially not on our first try writing it but the faster we can fix bugs the less of the headache they are. Before we start diving into the errors themselves it can help to know a little bit more about what Unity is telling us when it does log an error. The first thing we see is where the error comes from. This is the file name, the line of the error, and the particular character that the error is occurring on. Following that, there's going to be an error code. You can These aren't super informative, but you can use them to search for what the error uh, may correspond to. And then lastly, we get the information about what's going on. In this case here, for our first error, we have an unexpected symbol. So what this means is that we've got some sort of a syntactical error. C Sharp was expecting there to be, in this case, a end parenthesis or a comma, and we put in a semicolon. So what we can do is double click this error message and see what's going on. So here we see debug log error example dot sample variable semicolon. The answer is actually pretty simple once you're used to making method calls. We need to make sure that we enclose the parameter here inside of both open and close parentheses. So once we add that there, that actually stops that particular error. This can also happen though if you forget to include a semicolon or you forget to close curly braces, you may get a that error or something very similar. For our second error now, we, we've put the proper um, syntax around that debug log method, but we're now saying that this variable is inaccessible due to its protection level. So again, we can double click this to go to the line. It's the same line that's causing the issue, but now this error example dot sample variable is causing the problem. Well, error example is an error prone instance. So we can jump to our error prone class to see what's going on in there. And here the answer is again, another simple fix for us, but one that you may not be used to. The string is not public. And if a string is private inside of a class, it's not gonna be accessible from outside classes. So we just need to write, public here to make sure that it's public and accessible from the also error prone class. The next error we might see has to do with static and non-static members of classes. So in this case here we see the error an object reference is required to access non-static member and then the name of the variable we're trying to access. If we go back to Visual Studio, we see here it's a similar line again, but in this case I'm trying to access the sample variable from the class name itself. So not from a particular instance of the class, but rather I'm just calling the entire class name here error prone. The problem is, because this is not a static variable, it doesn't belong to the class as a whole. It belongs to the individual instances that get created. In this case here, when we see this object references required, what that means is that we need to use a variable to access it and have stored the instance in that variable. So here, instead of calling error prone dot sample variable, we need to call our, ver our variable that we have here, error example. And access the member variable from there. Our fourth error is the last of the set that will actually prevent our code from compiling. In this case, we've kind of done the opposite of the last error. Here it's saying static member, class name, and then the member cannot be accessed with an instance reference. So in this case, we're now trying to access a static variable by using the instance to reference it. If we jump to our code, we'll see here that number of errors is a static integer, meaning it belongs to this entire class. However, I'm trying to access it through the individual instance. So in this case, I need to do the exact opposite of my previous fix and say error prone dot number of errors. So I'm calling on the entire class to get that static variable. 
Our next error doesn't prevent our code from compiling, so we can still run our game, but it will throw an error when we run it. If I hit play, we see we get a new error here. Object reference is not set to an instance of an object. So what does this mean? We've been talking a little bit about references and instances, but we don't know exactly what this, this code is asking us for right now. It's not being particularly descriptive. Null reference exception, in fact, is a very kind of strange and arcane term for us to try and parse out. However, what we can do is we can double click and see where the issue is happening. So here we see we're trying to log something from error example and sample variable. We have here our error example, and this is where it gives us a little bit of a clue as to what, may, what might be going wrong. In this case here, we know that we have this variable, but we haven't assigned anything to it. And so maybe that's what's causing the problem. And sure enough, if we go back to Unity, we see that error example has never had anything assigned to it. Now if I click and drag this object into here and now hit play, we see that that part runs as normal. Now we're still getting another null reference exception, and so, but it's coming on a different line. So we can try and investigate what might be happening there. Double click again. Now we see that prefab name here is, is throwing the same exception. And that's because this game object is also not being assigned. And if we jump back to Unity, we see, unfortunately, that in this case, there is no way to assign it. If we wanted to assign it, we would either have to make sure that we do so in code by doing something like prefab equals new game object, or we could make this variable public so that we can manually assign it in the inspector. This error may also come up at times as unassigned reference exception instead of null reference exception. And typically that will happen when the uh, variable is able to be filled in the inspector. However, it may sometimes, as we saw here, come up as null reference exception as well. So any null or unassigned reference exception both mean you chances are have a variable somewhere that needs to have information put into it. Our last error has to do with working with arrays. When I hit play, I'm going to get a new error in our console, in this case saying index out of range exception, array index is out of range. In this case, this is coming from our error prone class, so we can open that up and see what's happening here. In this case, I have an integer array called values that has five values in it. In the start method, I'm trying to access the fifth index of it. However, arrays are used zero indexing, so we can say that this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're trying to access something outside of the array. In this case, we don't know what that might be in memory, and so C Sharp says, I'm simply not going to return anything. I'm going to throw an exception instead. And that's the message we see. We see outer index out of range exception, array index is out of range. It is actually pretty clear in this case. It's just a situation that we need to make sure that we're always staying within the actual indices of the array itself. We could fix this simply by going down to something like values 4, and we'll get this final value of 9. Likewise, this can also happen with lists. However, the name changes slightly. Now with this fix, we'll get an error from this uh, following line. And so I can jump back to Unity restart our game. And we see that in this case, we're printing 9 properly, but now we get an argument out of range exception. Argument is out of range. This is the same thing, but it's happening with a list instead of an array. So these are six very common things that you'll run into, especially when you're getting used to programming in C Sharp and getting used to interacting between C Sharp and Unity. Hopefully now when you see these key phrases, you'll be more used to them and be able to solve them a little bit quicker in your game development. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.